Are the doggies helping you? <laughs> okay pond clean out number i don't know it's been how many years has it been five years since the pond i think so we did it and we i mean <laughs> dad did it good job oh we tried squirters and sprayers and pumps and vacuum cleaners mm -hmm. and toothbrushes. <laughs> he scrubbed it clean. And it's good. So we built the pond about five years ago and well, it has been a journey to try to figure out what works best for the Southwest. But for sure every year we have to clean it out. There's just too much muck on the bottom from yeah. all the plants that have died and the algae that's grown and died. But it's also a nice opportunity to get all of the like the leaves and the dead, everything dead that's kind of fit in between all the rocks. So yeah. clean it out. We water the pasture and the trees with it and then we get ready for another year of swim season. It's really good skin treatment and hair um, treatment. <laughs> it, is. it works really good. It it probably be really expensive. Yeah. We got to see if the babies will play. We'll see if they're as good as playing as Willow was. It only took 22 hours of work, so don't poop on it or anything. Uh oh, yeah. What if they poop? <laughs> Hi, oh, oh already climb. climbing out. <laughs> wow, look how good climbers they are. Look at that. Already climbing out. Come on, little goats, come on, little goats. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. They're out of here. Shania's like, at the bottom. Shania's not good at parkour. <laughs> so, she's just gonna... Take They're gonna go wander around. Like, we want to eat these plants. I don't know if anybody's gonna be as good as Willow running around. Yeah. Josh Willow had the playing attitude. <laughs> they know exactly how to get out of here. <laughs> They're like, bye. <laughs> they don't want to play in our nice playground. Maybe if they run around, they'll get excited. Ooh, that's fun. People often think that the water is precious and you don't want to lose it, but we're replacing the water all the time as water evaporates. So we're less concerned about preserving that water and more concerned about getting all of the old leaves and everything cleaned out. So we get that all done and then we fill it right back up. Here's how our pond actually works. We have an intake over on the left side, which pulls the water in and naturally skims it while bringing it to this pump in the back. This pump then shoots it on up to the wetland and that's where the magic happens. At the bottom of the wetland, there's three feet of smaller rock. And this is where we have been inoculating it with bacteria. The heterotrophic and nitrosomatic bacteria lives here. And its job is to take all of the available nutrients in the pond and convert it to a more easier digestible form for the plants. The plants then absorb those nutrients and filter the water naturally. We're left with nice, clean and clear water. Although we definitely still get algae because we've learned over the years that algae is just a plant. And as long as the water is nice and clear, a little algae is just fine. While we're cleaning out the pond, we move the fish to the wetland, and that's where they hang out while we scrub the swimming area. Good job, fish. You get a reward. They all survived. You get a reward. They still haven't learned how to eat out of our hand, but they get pretty close. I'm not too afraid. Look at that. Oh, you scared them. <laughs> All right, now it's time to start swimming, even though it's cold. <laughs> it's really cold to us. But it's perfect water, it's all crystal, so we have to swim. We have to do it. Next time, next video. <laughs> we'll just push it off a little bit. We were young and we were free and running. Never bothered about what could be coming. Every day we danced and life was smiling We were young and drunk in love Good 
if I can't tell which one it is. Yeah. Come here, I wanna look at your foot real quick. Just stay there for two seconds. <laughs> she won't let me. Well, Luna is doing much better. I'm actually surprised that she's no longer limping or anything. I thought that she was just gonna get progressively worse. Pretty good. She's gotten stronger, maybe lost a little bit of that baby fat. So <laughs> baby fat. I don't think we can call it baby fat at this point. <laughs> We even weaned her off the drugs and she doesn't really need them anymore. Well, I think part of what made her feel better is that we put her on a grass diet and she lost a bunch of weight. And at first I was worried. I thought that wasn't a good thing that she lost weight. But now I'm like, well, maybe that really helped to take the weight off of her leg. Yeah, big time. So she still gets to have some alfalfa, but we still put her away for the evening and we make sure that she just gets some grass hay. So we're hoping we can find a good balance with her. But yeah, yeah I couldn't even tell which leg was the one that was bothering her. Look at that. Look how good she's walking. Ah. Look at it. She doesn't even limp at all. Look at that. She's probably going to run. Look at that. It's oh a trot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a half trot. The only thing is that I've noticed when I trim her hooves too frequently, which helps her hooves, but when I trim them too frequently that she actually doesn't like that and she kind of limps a little bit more. So it's this like balance between not letting them overgrow, but, mm. but yeah, dear old Luna is doing pretty good. She's still hanging in there. She'll be 13 this year, so. Oh gosh. Kevin is dressed very country today. Luke, Brian, oh, hat. This is country, this is more like. <laughs> That's your algae hat, I can see all the algae. <laughs> Caribbean, Indiana Jones. That's hat. true, that's true, good job. When I was first married to Kevin, I had the best idea. I decided one day that I was going to cook, prepare, and freeze shredded beef burritos. It was a recipe that I had watched my mom make, and I was confident that not only would Kevin love it, but that it would provide us with quick meals as we went to school and work. I waited till he was gone all day, and I got to work. I bought a five pound roast, like 10 cans of cream of mushroom soup, cans of green chilies, onions, and like five pounds of shredded cheese. Oh, I also got tortillas. It was about two hours into making this meal that I realized I had made way too many burritos, <laughs> like hundreds <laughs> of burritos. And when Kevin came home, he was excited and he loved his dinner, but then I opened the but then I opened the freezer and it was completely stocked with frozen shredded beef burritos. And let me just, and let me just say, when you've just newly been married and you decide to feed your husband frozen shredded beef burritos for the next two months, Let's just say it took a lot of love for him to not say anything. So what's the moral of this story? It's that it's sometimes hard to know <laughs> the correct proportions of things and what to buy and use up to make everything really economical and efficient. Today I'm cooking HelloFresh and you've seen me use it before, but what I absolutely love about it is just that I don't have to scour the grocery store for that one ingredient to complete a recipe, that I don't have to plan and prep the volumes of everything, that I don't have to worry about quality since HelloFresh makes sure that their seasonal ingredients are picked at the ripe freshness, and that on those busy nights that I don't have to worry about getting takeout. Everything is ready for me in a kit, in the fridge, and it's the correct amounts. You can go to HelloFresh.com and use code WEEDEM16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. So if you have something busy coming up or you'd just like to have a break from the mental load of thinking what to cook, try HelloFresh today. I'm making a Southwest beef pasta dish and it's not something that I would probably choose to make myself, but the family just raved about it. Had a bit of a kick, was nice and comforting and cheesy, and I didn't have to use too much mental energy to put it together. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code WEEDEM16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. And nobody has to eat any frozen burritos. Come on, Mama! We have fun shots for you today. Bit. Yum! It's okay, just a second. Those little tiny teats. Milk, milk, milk. 
They're so little. Look at that. Good job. Today we are taking care of the little, the big little kids, taking care of their hooves, doing their final CD and T vaccination, and then uh, giving them some herbal dewormers and some extra vitamins. So they uh, they are definitely new to this, and it's a bit tricky. Yeah. What a bit of this. This one tastes good. Yeah, this one does taste good. Not like I've tasted it, but <laughs> I assume it does. Okay, let's milk, milk, milk. Milk the teats. <laughs> good job. She's pretty looks good in the back. All right, Shania's looking great. See you later. Did a good first time on the milking stand. She has her little foot sticking forward. Come on, put your feet down, put your feet down. It's right there. There you go. It's like swimming, you know, and you're like, it's only three feet. Yeah, that one's kind of gross. A little bit. Time to milk. Milk, milk, milk. Open those legs up so we can see. Good job. Good milker. Honey is definitely the biggest one of them all. Oh my goodness. She's huge. you. Come here. Show everybody your teats. Milk, milk, milk. <laughs> good job. <laughs> good job. You're a good milker. Tilly's waiting for her baby. There we go nurse for mama even though she's huge. <laughs> the same size as her mom. All right, River, who is covered in moon spots. Yeah. Let's see if we can get her in the stand. Okay, there you go. That always makes everything better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, milk, milk, milk. So cute. Cute little tiny teats. All right. All done. Did such a good job. <laughs> All right, little Willow. Okay, time to milk you. Milk, milk, milk. <laughs> good boy. That's a good boy. What a good What milker. a good milker. So just as a refresher, these are all of the kids that we're retaining this year. We've got Honey, Winona, Shania, Lola, and then we have little River and Lancelot who are the new goats that we brought to our herd this year. So I'm gonna do something a little bit different this year. I'm gonna really, really try to get them trained to the stand earlier because when they are first fresheners, it's kind of a nightmare. And I would like to avoid that stress while we're dealing with new kids and everything else on the farm. So we're gonna see if we can train them a little bit earlier. We are going to reevaluate these kids though in probably mid-summer just to make sure that they're up to breeding standard. I can already sort of tell which ones are the standout winners, but I don't want to make judgments too soon, so we're just going to kind of watch them and see how they do. Kevin is the definite favorite around here. You don't even have a bottle and they love you. They don't even come to me because Kevin does the feedings on them. Oh my goodness. So as much as 
I love these little babies here. The plan isn't to retain any of them. I really didn't want a really young kid to raise up with the older bunch. For a second, I was thinking I would retain the doling out of Prim, but then I really would like the people on my waiting list to be able to get the kids that they'd want. So little Rue, wherever she is, Right here, she is so adorable. She's gonna go to a new home and so are all the others. So this little batch here are gonna stay a few more weeks and then they'll be gone to their new homes and we'll be done with babies, which is kind of a nice thing. You guys are so cute. But we have one kid, Piper. She's the preemie out of Raven and Finnick that was born 10 days early. Creamy, but she's so strong. <laughs> so strong, so she big. Voracious. She's the only one whose reservation fell through, so we uh, are gonna offer her up just kind of on our YouTube channel if anybody is interested. Really strong, which is a good sign that she's gonna be one of the strong ones of the herd. So at first I was thinking maybe a preemie wouldn't be as good for a milking doe, but you may have some potential in her, so. So if you're interested in little Piper, you can go ahead and send us an Instagram DM or an email and let us know if you're interested in her. I'm gonna calm down now. Take a little nap. Maybe not. <laughs> I am not a raincoat here to keep you warm Then go back in the closet after the storm I'm not a match simply waiting to burn All I am is a friend, your friend to the end On today's segment of Farm to Table, where Danelle, on today's episode of Farm to Table, where Danelle usually gathers great foods and vegetables and things that we grow on the property here and makes amazing dishes, I'm gonna show you how I'm just as good. First, we gather the very delectable ingredients. First, you very carefully and delicately, so as not to hurt anything, pick the mulberry fruit. Make sure you get a little bugs and stuff to add a little protein. So, there's the mulberries very scrumptious. For the ingredients, you have to do exactly as I tell you. It's very important. You have to get the store brand wheat bread, because it has to be a good price. You can't be buying expensive stuff. And also, store brand manteca de mani. Some people who don't know cooking might call it peanut butter. Gotta get the store brand when it's on sale for like 99 cents. This is the hard part where you have to be a really good cook to be able to do this. Got to take the manteca de mani and you have to put it on the bread very well. Not too much. It ruin the whole thing. And then the mulberries. So mulberries are already kind of like, kind of like a jam because they just, they just melt in your mouth. So you don't even have to make them into a jam. You just Put them on your sandwich. That's probably good right there. And then close it up. I know it seems really hard and you guys probably won't be able to do it, but just keep practicing and PB and mulberry sandwich is the best. <laughs> 